Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to start with trying to separate the time and position dependencies of the Schrodinger equation. The reason why we do that, there's plenty of examples, very famous ones. For example, the wave equations for the Bohr atom and the simple harmonic oscillator can be expressed in terms of standing waves, so therefore they don't depend on time, and so there's definitely advantage to be able to separate the dependencies on position and time to make the equations a lot easier to work with. So what we're going to do here, we're going to start with the wave equation in a one dimension that was first dependent on position and time, and separate it or write it as a product of two wave functions, one that's dependent on position and one that's dependent on time. We then take that and substitute that back into the original assuring equation that we worked with before. And so instead of taking the partial second derivative with respect to x squared of the function that is dependent on x and time, it's now going to be a product of two functions. Same over here with the with the potential energy term and same over here when we take the partial with respect to time again it's going to be of that product rather than the single wave function that depends on position and time combined. If we do that then we realize that this now can be reduced to this for example if we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x it's not going to affect this this becomes a constant it can be taken out here we still write as a product and here, since we're taking the partial derivative with respect to time, we can take out the position-dependent portion and write it in front. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the product of the wave function dependent on position and the wave function dependent on time. There's a reason why we're doing that. So if we do that, notice on the left side, this of course disappears because we divide by this function and then we end up with this in the denominator. Over here, they both disappear because we're going to divide by, divide by both of these functions. And on the right side, this disappears because we're dividing by the position-dependent wave function, and we end up with the time-dependent wave function on the denominator. Now, if you look very carefully, note, on the left side, we only have dependency on position. On the right side, we only have dependency on time. Since that's now the case, we realize that if we make a change on the left side and position, that will not affect the right side at all. If we make a change in the time on the right side, that will not affect the left side at all. And since those equations are equal to each other, that means that each side of the equation must be equal to the same constant. Let's call it C, which means we can write the right side equal to the constant. And we could, oh, I, I said right, I meant. We can take the left side and set it equal to C and we can take the right side of the equation and set it equal to c. Now also notice our partial differentiation turn into normal differentiation because it's only dependent on the single variable x. So we take the derivative of x with respect to x and the derivative of time with respect to time. Now the two equations we end up with are a portion of the of the uh, Schrodinger equation. In other words, they're a new form of the Schrodinger equation. And these will be a lot easier to solve than the original Schrodinger equation. It's a much easier format to solve these types of differential equations. So what we're going to do in the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to solve this differential equation and then show you how to find this differential equation so that we can come up with two new equations that will then give us two new waveforms to work with when we're dealing with small particles in quantum mechanics. So again, the attempt here is to come up with separate equations, one that only works with, that only uses a function of position and one that only uses a function of time. And that's how we do that.